Today I'm going to cover five email marketing examples. I've already made a video, a couple videos about what email marketing is, and I'll put those at the end as a reference if you'd like to look at them if you're not sure. And I've also have a free course that you can hit below on how to set up your email marketing automated system. Now, what I'm going to do right now is review what email marketing is very quickly before I give you five examples. Basically, email marketing is a system that's automated. This is where passive income can happen. And that's what most people are looking for when they're looking for online business. Um, not everybody's looking for that, but this part of your business would definitely be passive income. Once you set it up, it keeps working when you're doing something else. And that for me, that's what I'm looking for. Now, what is email marketing? Email marketing is when you use your platform, your social media platform that you've decided to build up, whether it be YouTube or Instagram, LinkedIn, Inst um, I said Instagram, didn't I? Facebook, okay, Twitter, all those different social media platforms. What you're doing is you're offering people on those platforms something for free. Or maybe you're running ads and you said, hey, I've got this small cookie book that I made of recipes that will help you lose weight. If you follow these recipes for one week or 30 days, whatever it is, you could lose 10 pounds. And most people are going to say, hey, she's got all the recipes written out. I'm going to go ahead and, and give her my email address for that. I mean, that's a no brainer. It's free. And what do I get out of it? I could lose 10 pounds and I'm looking to lose 10 pounds. See how that works. It has to be something that's going to solve a problem for people and that they want to give you that email address. Now, what do you do with the email address? Big whoop, right? I got an email address. I didn't sell anything. What does it do? You then set up an automated sequence of emails where you introduce yourself, you start warming up to people, get them to know, like, and trust you. And then you can sneak some little sales things in there. So you might, you know, get that, uh, give them that ebook with the recipes, and then you can keep talking about, you know, introduce yourself and then start talking about other recipes that could be helpful or different nutritional foods that you want them to keep eating. And then you might say, Hey, this is a shake that I use that has been very helpful. I get all my nutrition and boom, there you go. You try to sell that shake as you're talking about the same content. So that's how email marketing works. Let's turn that off. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Anyway, and then you have it all automated. I have a free course below where I show you how to set that up. But sometimes you want to do what they call a campaign. You might, might want to come in and use different styles and things of emails. That's what I'm going to show you today. Different things that you can do. You don't want to just keep blah, 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 doing the same thing. You want to start um, putting in some different styles of emails. Now, why do we use email marketing? It's proven that email marketing helps to improve, increase subscriber engagement. Now, why do you want that engagement? Again, people buy from you after they get to know you, like you, and trust you. And they might have to have seven or eight, what I call touches or contacts from you before they'll even start to feel that way. Think of yourself. I know a lot of people compare email marketing to dating. When you date someone, you don't right away on that first date fall madly in love. Maybe some people do. They think they do. But in general, most people need seven or eight different contacts. You need to go out with them and get to know them. And it takes a few dates. It takes a, maybe a month. It takes some people longer than that. But the more you are in contact with someone, the more you either like them or you don't, right? It, it's a friendship works the same way. Hey, I, I like that person. I want to spend more time with them. And that's how email marketing is. So it really is a wonderful way to build relationships and get people to know you, like you, and trust you, and then they'll buy from you. Now here's example number one. I call it after the free thing. So let's say you gave them something for free. Maybe you gave them some workout exercises to do totally free. Maybe you made a PDF with 30 different um, yoga exercises or um, weightlifting, whatever you're into, okay? But now you're going to say to them, Hmm. I see that maybe you're starting to hurt. Maybe you weren't in, in shape. So doesn't feel too good. Does it? Are you experiencing sore muscles because you've been out of shape? And yeah, of course they probably are. And so then you can offer them a foam roller, which adds to helping them still exercise, but the foam roller will have different um, stretching exercises and things they can do. And they can buy that 
foam roller from you. That's just an example. Now this person um, probably happens to sell all kinds of exercise equipment, but maybe you're in the exercise or healthcare industry and you're not really selling products. You can always go to Amazon, sign up as an Amazon associate and offer that foam roller to kind of complement the business that you have, if that makes sense. And then you can make seven to nine percent off of each sale that you make so pretty cool so after you give somebody that free thing what can you follow up with with something that you could maybe sell them that still helps solve a problem now this next one is from rent the runway and i i couldn't copy it because it's kind of um scrolling so if you want to read it as i talk but basically in this one they're telling people don't go buy a dress and that's eye-catching to me what do you mean don't go buy a dress i need a wedding dress or i need a dress to go to that wedding you're telling me not to buy one well this company rents dresses and what they're saying is um they use some of the catchy phrases as do you want to be like the 27 dresses girl in that movie um you could rent a dress for the wedding for the rehearsal um for the you know for the bridal shower and you could rent three dresses cheaper than you could buy one so that's what they're trying to sell is renting but it's kind of like reverse psychology that headline because most people think oh i have to buy we're in that mentality we're not used to renting things like dresses so i thought this one was pretty catchy and i wanted you to see how they even had it scrolling um but that's something you could do with your own business maybe say you know you don't need to do such and such you could do this instead um so kind of use some reverse psychology especially in the healthcare industry you know everybody thinks that they have to do heavy lift with late uh, weight lifting or cardiovascular exercise when you can still lose weight and still get in shape without jumping around if you eat right and move see what i'm saying you don't have to jump around and do all those um, hard exercises which is really why a lot of people won't do it they don't want to jump around and have to do that kind of exercise so i call that one reverse psychology tell them they don't have to do something and then tell them what they could do instead now number three is share your pain i thought this one was pretty good this person wrote this out and again you can stop the video and read it i'm not going to read it to you but share your pain on your journey on 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 why you are where you're at instead of trying to sell an item say this is where I was and these were all the things that I did wrong to get to where I'm at today and you're sharing all the things you did wrong and somebody reading it might say well what did you do right and that's kind of where the catchy tagline is at the bottom after they hear about everything you did wrong maybe in the next email the third email could be you know this is what I did to solve the problem so the person that wrote this probably has a good three to five email sequences that they can write to finally get you where what is it that you did that worked because this person keeps sharing i think it's paul paul's story no daniel okay so daniel is is making them want more right at the end and he's going to keep pulling you and hooking you along until you finally found out what did paul daniel do to finally solve his problem. So that's a kind of a short sequence of emails within your bigger sequence, or you could run it that way as a campaign. Now, number four is using an email that requires a double opt-in. Here's just an example from Chipotle. Of course, yours would be different, but a lot of people, there's a lot of mixed messages on this. I hear some people say, don't do double opt-in because then you're going to lose a huge amount of people. Other people say they prefer double opt-in because then you really know that people want to be in your email list. So that's just a decision you have to make. But the advantages of double opt-in are one, you know, people really want to be there two it really cuts down on spam because those people opted in twice to say yes i want these emails and then three there are some countries and some regions of the world that require double opt-in so you're kind of losing those people if you don't do it but again it's up to you if you want to do a double opt-in or a regular opt-in it's up to you i would think that as your list gets really huge you could start doing double opt-in because then you can afford to be picky about who comes on your list especially if you're new um getting 50 people is exciting right 
in, when you're new or a 500 or when you hit that thousand. But when you start hitting 15, 20,000, I would say then double opt-in is probably not a big deal. So anyway, that's another, the fourth email. And, and now I'll share the fifth. Now I found this one. It Again, it's somebody that sells things. Um, but maybe your email list isn't about selling a product. Maybe you're into affiliate marketing or something like that, but you can still use this for any um, market. Show appreciation. Tell your customers that I really appreciate you, you know, being on my newsletter and it's been a year since I started this and I'm, I really appreciate it. Now the, now the person here said, we're going to donate 3 million pairs of, um, of, of a product. Okay to show our appreciation. And you're like, wow, that's a lot. But how could you use it? Even if you're a small company, um, you could have a, uh, an organization that you send 10% of your profits to. And you could say for this particular email, everybody that clicks through, cause you can see that click through rate, I'm gonna donate a dollar to this organization, this nonprofit, because I really appreciate you hanging in there with me and, and you know, becoming my friend, blah, blah, blah. And everybody that clicks through on this email, I'll, I'll donate an extra dollar. So it's just a way of showing appreciation and then showing them that you're the type of person that likes to give as well. So hopefully those five different emails will start making you think outside the box and not just sending sequences and, and kind of being the same all the time. Change it up a little bit, do something different and make it a little bit more exciting. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to hit the free course link below. Definitely, if you haven't started email marketing, I strongly recommend it. The course is free. There's no gimmick or anything. Um, and it will help you get set up as well. And then you can start collecting emails and start sending out those awesome emails and getting an audience that will get to know you, like you, trust you, and then buy from you.